President Trump is in Key West, Florida today, where he's meeting with a task force on drug smuggling. In the past, he's been focused on drugs coming from Mexico, but this trip is about the ones coming in at U.S. ports and by mail. This comes as the Trump administration pushes forward on plans for the president's summit with Kim Jong-un. Mr. Trump says the meeting will be held in the coming weeks and that officials are having a, quote, very good dialogue leading up to it. Ben Schreckinger is a political national correspondent, and he joins us now. Ben, the president said he will leave North Korea talks if they are not fruitful. So what exactly would success look like? Any thawing uh, in the relationship between North Korea and the United States uh, is something that Trump could tout as a success here. Uh, you know, the, this is one of our worst relationships, essentially non-existent with any other country on Earth. Uh, this, there's sort of a, a very little to lose uh, dynamic here, uh, except, of course, unless this brings us somehow closer to, to nuclear war, which we all hope will and, not happen. And so when he says the talks need to be fruitful. Is he looking for something specific to come out of these talks? An agreement about, uh, about disarmament is the ultimate goal here. Uh, whether the president can uh, sort of hit it out of the park and whether that's his goal or whether it's uh, simply setting up a framework for, for more talks or, or getting some sort of sign of movement, uh, really uh, coming away from this with, with almost anything to show uh, will be at least a, a partial success. And Ben, if the talks don't play out well for the president, what happens then? Well, th there are a few scenarios worse than the current status quo. Uh, the United States has not prevented North Korea from getting or testing nuclear weapons. Uh, so if, if North Korea becomes even more belligerent, um, or if this somehow harms our relationship uh, with our allies that, that are most threatened by North Korea, especially South Korea, also Japan, uh, that would be a setback. Now, let's talk about Mike Pompeo for a moment. Several Democrats have praised him for his visit to Pyongyang, but it's unclear whether he will be confirmed as Secretary of State. Where does that stand at this moment, and what would it mean for talks if he's not confirmed? Right now, uh, Rand Paul is one Republican who has, uh, said, who has said that he opposes Pompeo's nomination. Uh, John McCain's not currently in the Senate. Uh, so Trump would need uh, every Republican to vote for Pompeo, and I think he would need one Democrat to come around as well. Um, so it's going to be a, a close vote. Uh, if, if Pompeo can't be confirmed, um, it may be a setback to these talks, although the fact that he already went and had held secret talks as CIA director uh, shows that uh, even without this formal position of Secretary of State, uh, he's already playing a role in this, uh, in this chapter with North Korea. All right. Now, Ben, the president and the Japanese prime minister also discussed trade recently. Did Japan, our close ally, get out of this meeting what it set out to? You know, I'm not sure about that. That's a, that's a very good question. Um, I know that Abe and Trump have a very good relationship. Uh, they, Abe met with Trump more than uh, any president uh, and Japanese prime minister have met uh, in a president's first year in office last year. Uh, and that continues to be one of, the, one of the better relationships that Trump has with a foreign head of state. All right, now moving on then to a little buzz about the 2020 election today. Republican Senator Bob Corker was asked whether he would support Trump's reelection. Here's his response. I have no idea who's going to run for president in 2020, and I'm not about to say who I would support for that. Have we? So we have no idea who's going to run. Whether the president runs again or not, I think is very questionable, candidly. Ben, we just heard Corker say, who knows whether President Trump is even going to run. Are there real doubts that he will? Sure. No one knows what the future will hold. He's the oldest president ever sworn in, older than Ronald Reagan was when he was sworn in in 1981. Uh, there's a possibility of impeachment looming over him, uh, especially if Democrats take the House in November. Uh, there's a possibility that, that a president who's always unpredictable uh, decides I don't need this anymore uh, and goes and, and retires and decides to play golf. Um, so while Trump is very competitive, 
uh, and has given every indication that he intends to run for re-election. Uh, there really are too many question marks on this to know uh, what we're going to see come 2020. Right. But nothing from, from the president himself to indicate that he might not run. No, no. The president has given every indication that he intends to, to run and to win. All right. So uh, Senator Lindsey Graham today tweeted that he will support Trump in 2020. But what do you make of the fact that Republican congressional support is even being raised at this point in Trump's presidency? Well, it's not a good sign. He continues to have uh, one of the worst approval ratings uh, of any president in the history of modern polling. Uh, he continues to, to have alienated uh, many, many Republicans on the Hill, especially in the Senate. Uh, and so many Republicans think the way that Bob Corker is speaking, uh, but because Corker is not seeking re-election, uh, he can say it publicly. Uh, a lot of these other Republicans on the Hill saying it only privately. All right. Ben Schreckinger, thank you so much for your insight. Thanks so much for having me.